Okay, I'm going to try something a little bit different today from what I've done in the past, and that is I'm actually going to make a video answering some of the comments. I've had a lot of people request, you know, can you answer the comments and things. Well, I'm going to try this. I don't know how this is going to go, if I'm going to do this with each study I bring out or not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, for me to go in and type it out, and then you get into the comment battles and all that stuff. So I'm just going to kind of go through. I'm going to add a couple more things to my study I did on interracial marriage and uh, answer some people's questions. So uh, first of all, I did not make a uh, make it clear what the 12 boundaries are of Deuteronomy chapter 32. Um, Deuteronomy 32 verse 8. I'll turn there quick in the King James Bible. If you have your King James Bible, make sure you read this. Uh, I don't put up scriptures a lot of times on the screen simply because I want people to turn to the scriptures themselves and read it. Deuteronomy 32 verse 8 says, When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Verse 9, For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. And I saw a comment, I might even get to it, We're not. I'm not sure yet, but I saw a comment, somebody said, um, well, see, it's about the nation of Israel because of verse 9. No, it's just saying one of those 12 boundaries is there for the nation of Israel. That's his inheritance. That's the Lord's inheritance. They're his people. Okay, but there are 12 natural boundaries. And um, I don't know if this is the correct thing or not, but uh, according to uh, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, I think this is a pretty good list, he has here North America, Central America, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, East Indies, West Indies, Greenland, Arctic, and the Antarctic. So, and you can debate that thing back and forth. I don't think that there's any scriptures actually saying what those 12 boundaries are in the Bible. But that's a pretty good list right there. But you see, there's another thing there uh, division-wise, and that is tongues. Okay, um, God divides up the people there in Genesis uh, chapter 11. He divides them up according to tongues. He separates them, confounds their language. So you have today a lot of people that are separated by not only their national boundaries, but also their tongues. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to squabble over, you know, people of European descent intermarrying and things like that, uh, certainly. You know, um, but I think some of the cultures there, again, you know, weigh that stuff out, brethren. I mean, the tongues and things, you could say, according to tongues, you know, but a lot of the English language actually comes from the German language, the Saxon language. So, again, keep in mind, we are in the end times, all right? What we have now has not been the standard, all right? Is not the standard, is not what God intended in the Bible, all right? Um, we're at the end, and God is very angry right now with this world, and integration is one of the reasons for it, integration and interracial marriage. So let's look at some of these comments here. Um, I guess I'll start out, I'll just do top comments first. Uh, Jim Beckwith, maybe it's in your second part of the study, but you said that you have a theology of who the 24 elders, but never answered it in this video, Brian. I'm not sure if that was in the first or the second part, but I think that it's from, if you read in Revelation chapter 5, it talks about from every kindred, tongue, people, nation. So I would say that there's probably, if you have 12 boundaries, 24 elders, there's probably going to be two from each of the 12 boundaries. Just a theory. I don't know for sure, but it cannot be just purely Jews, 12 apostles, 12 from the Old Testament. It can't be because they're from every tongue, people, nation. So just a theory. Uh, Warren Barth, Latin did not originate in Africa, but since everybody else has pointed out the other flaws, I thought I'd just point that out, one out. Yes, it did. Latin comes from Africa. It's a North African language. Uh, people think that it's just, when I say Africa, that it just simply means, you know, um, black people, you know, uh, things like that. No, it also includes the Arabs. It also includes the Egyptians. Uh, a lot of that. And um, Roman Catholicism is a uh, basically goes back to Alexandria, Egypt. That's why those new versions come from Alexandria, Egypt. Okay, so the official language for centuries of of the Roman Catholic Church has been Latin. So that's the way it is. Uh, Sir N. Daniel, you are so confused. Nothing anyone says will convince you. May God de delicately straighten you out in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay. What about the scriptures? You know, and I've seen this thing time and time and time again where people will not deal with the scriptures that were brought up. Or they'll somewhat deal with it, but they twist it. They tweak it. 
Um, and again, I'm confused. I'm 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 not confused. Uh, I'm condemned. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Some people say I'm confused. He does, but um, I'm condemned as being a racist, and yet I'm trying to defend ethnic kindred purity to keep the races distinct, uh, not to destroy kindreds. Okay, interracial marriage. If you look at the, a lot of the times um, when you had like, I know like the, um, I think it was the British would do it, and there's other times that people would do this thing where they would actually intermarry specifically to eliminate certain people, certain groups. Okay, that's how you uh, integrate a society, not by just simply moving people in, because a lot of times you move people in, they will naturally segregate. That's what happened here in America when America was first settled. You had Germans coming over. They would create areas that, that uh, were speaking German. Um, my wife was telling me actually the uh, Babel building she was raised in out there in Iowa for many, many generations. Actually, they spoke totally in German. They didn't even speak in English. So, you know, people naturally will segregate. And, uh, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's, let's continue here. Um, Payne Starks, wait, you're Brian German, you look like a Jew or Arab. Uh, okay, well, uh, I might look Jewish or whatever. People say Arab too, I don't really see that, but, uh, you know, uh, no, if, if uh, you look at my ancestry, it goes back to Germany. So, that's the way that is. Ravinder Jit Singh, Europeans not allowed to eat Asians food. Uh, who said anything about that? Again, you know. Naphtali, 1981, honest question, just so that I can understand more of your position, brother. Number one, you appear to want to honor God's habitation in terms of where he placed them. Number two, you are from Germany. Number three, if you have respect God's boundaries and habitation, then why are you inhabiting a land that belonged to the native Indians of the Americas? I explained all that stuff in the study. Again, a lot of these comments, people are only proving that they're not watching the videos. They're just commenting. So, you know, let's see how much it goes on to. Yeah, it goes way down to there. I'm not going to read all of it. I answered that stuff. Uh, 32 replies. I'm not going to go through all those things again. You know, uh, going into a lot of the stuff that happened to the Native Americans there. Um, Daniel Alvira. Um, My wife is Filipino and I am Irish and Puerto Rican. We love the Lord and we love each other. You lost me on this one, brother. You have much to learn about love. Uh, what I thought our, the Bible's our standard. You see? See what I'm saying? You, you get rid of the Bible because of your feelings. Uh, you have offended me and many brothers and sisters with this one. Kin, kindred and people and nation and tongue. This is the kind of doctrine that dishonors Christ. How? It's what the Bible teaches. I mean, let me just show you some wicked, horrible sinners. Are you ready? I'm going to show them to you. First of all, Look at those wicked sinners right there. Isn't that disgusting seeing these Mexican people in their traditional outfits? Women in those traditional dresses and things which actually are very modest. And, and this guy here in his traditional outfit. And, isn't that awful? Isn't that just terrible? Let me show you some more sinners. Here's a traditional African dress and outfits. Isn't that just awful? I mean, they should look like Americans. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be dressing with traditional stuff like that. How dare they? You know, let's intermarry them with, with white people and things so that they can lose their distinctions. Let's just get rid of all ethnicity. Let's just have one race. And then tell me God's for that. How about these wicked people here? Traditional Japanese wedding ceremony. Isn't that awful? I mean, look, look, traditional clothing. Ironic, too, that a lot of the traditional clothing of, of kindredly pure people is actually very modest. What the, women's, what the women wear. Interesting. But it, isn't that just terrible? Look at it. Japanese people dressed traditionally. Of course, you know where I'm going next. How about German? Here you have a Bavarian dance. Isn't that terrible? They should just, you know, dress with the modern styles of the world and things. And I realize a lot of them do and things. And I'm not saying that they dress that way all the time. But here you have a Pakistani uh, wedding garments and things. Isn't that awful? I mean, they should, they should just have, you know, just like everybody else. I'll show you two more. Traditional Native American, that's an older photo even. You know, isn't that awful? 
I mean, you know, she should be in tight hip hugger pants and, and uh, you know, a, a low cut top and everything. And he should be dressed with baggy jeans on or something and gangster wear or whatever. Who's the racist again? See, I defend this. I'm for this. I'm for seeing all these different ethnic people with their, with their traditional uh, outfits on. You know, and again, look at that Native American woman there. Very, very modest clothing that she has on. It's really something. How about traditional Russian? Again, look at the very, very modest uh, dresses that these young women have on. And you see the guy in the background there with the accordion. You know? These are, I mean, these are, these are racists. Look at that. They're not dressing like everybody else dresses out there in the world. How dare they? And they're all the same kindred. They're all the same people there. Isn't that just awful? Oh, man. What wicked, terrible people. See, I defend saying, hey, God made me a certain way. I'm going to preserve that. I'm not going to mix with everybody else. That's what I'm for. I'm not saying I'm better than other people. I'm saying I'm different. And how many of you, I know, we'll see probably here in the comments, some of you are like saying, yeah, I was trying to look like somebody from another kindred and things, and I felt ashamed of myself because of the color of my skin or because of my hairstyle or because of whatever. Don't be. Keep yourself separate. Keep yourself segregated and say, thank God that I'm white. Hey, thank God that I'm black. Thank God that I'm an Indian. Thank God that I'm Spanish. Thank God that I'm whatever. And stick with that. That's not racism. You see? I'm going to show you here in a minute, too, who's really behind this whole movement. But, um, so, yeah, I have, to, I have a lot to learn about love. So, there, I'm not going to look at all the replies. A waste of time. Brian Collins writes, we all come from God. We all are one race human. Uh, well, it's kind of interesting because if you study the etymology of the word human, uh, Hugh was a Druidic god, so a Hugh man. Uh, some of the first early writings of that were by Manley Palmer Hall, uh, the arch uh, mason who said that the seething energies of Lucifer are at the command of master masons. Uh, he worshipped a god named Hugh. So if you're a Hugh man, hmm, I'll let you figure out the rest. But uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Okay, verse 6, you can read the whole thing, too. I'm not leaving anything out on purpose here. But verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. So uh, there, Brian Collins. I mean, you got the good first name there, but, uh, you know, we're, it's not one human race out there, okay? You're believing New World Order Jesuitical propaganda, right? Um, next we have Alfred Ramos. Husky, I will use the word race even though that word is not found, or not used in the KJV, just like you use the word rapture and trinity, which are not found in the KJV. I've talked about that in other studies. At approximately 5930, you claim that the devil is for integration. He is. Uh, but you also claim that nowhere in the Bible does God teach us to integrate with other races. You, sir, are a liar. Uh, Leviticus 19, verse 33, Stranger, sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. Okay, it's not talking about coming in and moving in and you marrying and intermarrying and stuff like that. You say, how do you know? Well, first of all, we contradict other scriptures. All right? I mean, you know, it, it's so funny. These people, they look for the, the exception to overthrow the rule. All throughout the Bible, you have don't intermarry, don't intermarry. You go even into the New Testament, you have Paul having to make excuses for Timothy because he's of mixed kindred. He's part Greek, part Jewish. And Paul's saying, you know, yeah, the Jews are well, this is well reported of among the Jews and things. And he's like, okay, come on, we got to get you circumcised so that you can fit in somewhat and things. It's a problem. All right? It always is the whole way through. And again, even after the time of Jacob's trouble, God restores the nations. And then the devil comes out and he messes them up again, gets them all together to fight the Jews again. And then God busts it up and in eternity, he gets the nations restored again. I mean, how can you ignore this stuff? You know? But, uh, just, no, 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 no. Uh, let's see, he says here, I showed you a verse in the Bible that teaches the opposite of what you're teaching. Uh, our, so you just throw out the rest then, I guess. 
Our habitats is dry land and wherein we live within the boundaries that the Almighty has put forth for mankind. No scripture. Furthermore, the book of Revelation, where John sees people from different nations, ethnicities, and kindred, this is to show us that God will give salvation to those that believe in Jesus Christ and keep his commandments regardless of their race. Huh? Well, of course, God's no respecter of persons. I never said God won't save you if you're, if you're somehow a mixed kindred or something like that. Of course, God will save anybody, you know. But the point is, God makes distinct, distinction. God is interested in distinction. You see, you know, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Did you get it? Okay. <laughs> uh, continuing here. Um, your prejudice towards non-whites non is obvious when you describe other races. How? <laughs> Example, you called a black neighborhood a bad neighborhood simply for it being a black neighborhood. That's racist and prejudice. Uh, when did I say that? I don't remember saying that. You know? And it's funny, too, because a lot of times I've seen, you know, the, the, the black... Okay, I think I did say it's actually something about Washington, D.C. Uh, they get along fine with each other most of the time. But if you're denying that there's any black, uh, you know, people beating up white people um, that get into their neighborhood, uh, you're quite ignorant. <laughs> and, of course, it goes both ways, too. There's There's radical rednecks, you know, white areas of the South where I've been to, and they'll beat up black people that come into the area. So, oh, let's just pretend it doesn't exist. Yeah, sure. Um, that's racist and prejudice. You were simply driving through a black neighborhood wherein you do not know the people that live in that community, yet decide to label a bad neighborhood because it's a black community. It's known for crime. Washington, D.C. has got all kinds of crime in it. Again, I'm being scientific there. There are other examples where you make it obvious that you're a, as racist, but I'd rather not discuss that at the moment because it's disgusting and that makes me sick. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. You take scripture completely out of context to prove a point that's making you a pervert. Wow. So, you know, and, and then these types of, of knuckleheads will say that I'm hateful and I use strong speech and sarcasm. Yeah. Since you're going to make a living from being a so-called preacher... You should repent and focus on getting right with God because it's obvious that you're a backslider. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll go down here. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to keep going through, you know, the replies. That's, I, it'd take me all day. I'm just going to hit the ones that are the main comment and then other people's replies to it. I'm not going to get into it. Um, path is narrow. Actually, about not understanding languages and English accents from different states equals remember what God did with our tongues. See, the town over can develop new language very quick without knowing dialect. Okay, I don't really know what that's all about, but I'll go to the next one. I've enjoyed, enjoyed all your teaching. This is Michael Cooper. I've enjoyed all your teaching so far, but on this one I think you have missed the mark. Going back to defining kindred Israel Jews and being equally yoked in Christ as our Lord and Savior. A few thoughts to keep in mind. Keep your comments open. Be open to reproof and correction. Be slow to anger, even if you're right. You'll help win more souls to Christ this way. Keep it up. Thank you. You know, see, I, I don't care. That's that's fine. That constructive criticism. He doesn't agree. Okay, move on. You don't have to call me a pervert and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, good night. Um, uh, Ghost man. He says, you're German. I thought I tho you're Arab. Okay. Um, and then uh, see here, Kevin Kazak. Uh, must have responded to this or something, in which he's been blocked from the channel for a while. So, again, I lose com or control over my comments. Interesting. Jeremy Evans, NNI. Uh, okay, there's a whole lot of stuff right there. I'm not going to go over all of it just for sake of time, but he said, I commented on this before, and I speak as a mixed person. I watched this entire entire study. Number one, no serious historian would isolate a document and form conclusions from it when other information concerning that time period is available. Say, for instance, a historian, yeah, see this, you're getting into all kinds of stuff here. I really could care less what historians or philosophies or whatever else. Um, uh, You know, he says here, Nehemiah alluded to the sin of Solomon in Nehemiah 13, verses 20 through 31. He had never specified how he sinned, except that Solomon's foreign wives caused him to sin. 
uh, Nehemiah 13, verse 26. See, I mean, are you blind? I mean, can you not read plain English? And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk here or anything, but, I mean, good night, man. It says it just as plain as day. Uh... You know, verse, uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 25, um, and I contended with them, it's not talking about Solomon's wives either here, by the way, and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Uh, Nehemiah alluded to the sin of Solomon in there, yet never specified, specified how he sinned except that Solomon's foreign wives caused him to sin. Are you kidding me? See, these people cannot deal with the scriptures. All right? And yes, he took the strange wives. And why did those strange wives bring foreign gods? You see? I mean, if you're of German ancestry, you have certain traditions and certain holidays and things that you keep and certain issues, but you marry somebody from Africa, they're going to have a totally different set of beliefs and feelings and opinions. And again, go back 500 years ago. What was integration 500 years ago? See? But it's, it's okay because we have it just proliferating right now, and so we have to be okay with it. See, you know, a lot of this stuff, I just can't go into all of this different stuff and answer it. It's just, it's a waste of time. Um, Going down through ripe food says camouflage outfit. Okay, I like camouflage, but I don't know. Is my final shirt supposedly camouflage, I guess. I don't know. Um, Chad Lamberth, uh, you are looking, you're understanding uh, of scripture. Do you know, do you not remember those who withstood Moses for marrying the woman from Ethiopia? Did you not know us in Christ are of the spirit and not the flesh? Now, there is no difference in Jewish or Greek. Here's another one of the ones that these integrationists will come up with. I've got to show you here in a minute, too, what the integration thing is currently doing. But let's look up this, this verse in Galatians, because this is another, another one of the uh, little fun things that they do. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And they say, see, what are we making an issue over race for? Uh, kindred distinction. Because after all, the Bible says well, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Really? Okay, well, let's uh, stay with the context of the verse then. There's, there's neither bond nor free. And uh, here's the real doozy. There's neither male nor female. So I guess according to the philosophy of people like this, uh, sodomite marriage would be okay. There's no distinction. You see? <laughs> they, they, they pervert the scriptures. It's, it's incredible. Okay, Alan Coote, I guess here. Brother Brian, please define what you mean by race. I have talked about that before in another study. Does the Bible teach racism? I get into the whole thing. Uh, if you're referring to physical attributes, how are, are you classifying racial distinctions? God never did this. Read Numbers 12.1, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. If he had married an Ethiopian woman, the Lord is in truth looking for the character of Christ in us rather than the color of the flesh on us. Okay, uh, I already talked about all this stuff. You know, Again, are you saying by your comment there, Alan, are you saying that uh, you support the destruction of all ethnic groups and the merger of all people into one blended super race where there is no distinction anymore? Are you supporting the destruction of ethnic purity? Like I just showed up there, there's other pictures I showed earlier. Is it wrong for Africans to only marry Africans? And, and thank the Lord for the, the fact that their skin is dark and that they have other features that set them apart from someone like myself. Is that wrong for them to do it? Then why would it be wrong for me to do it? And why would it be wrong for a Mexican to do it? Or Japanese? Or whatever? You see? Uh, Kazak Then Drool here. Uh, I think the... Movement, air travel was commercialized, habitation boundaries became part of your dispensational teachings into the past. 
For thousands of years, the land has been shared, conquered, bought, and sold, you name it. Take a page out of history to find that out. Well, of course, we're in the end times. You know, again, let's change the Bible. Let's, let's not preach what the Bible preaches because things are so different now. Uh, things are different because man has strayed that far from what God's original design was. Again, go back 500 years ago. And I'm not saying, oh, there was no sin 500 years ago. People will lie about me on that too, probably. Uh, of course there was. Uh, Calvin tried with fire Clemens, paused at 22.15 in Genesis 10.13, and following it states Nimrod was a descendant of Ham, but it also states in verses 11 that Asher went out from Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalni in the land of Shinar and built a Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Kela. It seems as if you're saying all the inhabitants of Babel were strictly Hamites. I didn't say that. If you can read Genesis chapter 11, it's obvious that there are, all the people are one. Okay, I did not say that. Um, why would Asher, who is descendant of Shem, be in Babel, Babylon, if the Gentiles were already divided in their lands? Again, I didn't say that. Genesis chapter 10 is giving the what happens over the next, you know, centuries. But then it goes back, it goes from Genesis 9, basically Genesis 10 says what's going to happen over the couple hundred years from then, and then Genesis 11 picks up where Genesis 9 left off. That's what's going on there. It's the nations before they were divided. All right. Uh, and I'll just skip down to the next one here. Paul's at 3820. You said Deuteronomy 32 is still binding on us today. Being a dispensationalist, thus rightly dividing, how could this be binding on Gentiles today when the context is clearly speaking to and about Jacob and Israel proper? No, it's not. God divided all the nations, the sons of Adam. The sons of Adam are not just Israel. Um, and of course he quotes verse 9 here. A little confused and continuing on near the end of part 1. You're using the argument of cultural differences to uphold the notion that these differences, accents, etc. among those within America who are of the same kindred somehow shows how bad mixing kindreds can be. I don't understand that argument. If one were to say, I don't want blacks, Hispanics, Asians at all and living in my neighborhood, would they have a prejudice against those kindreds mentioned? Yes, they would. Oh, okay. Well, you know, what happens when you race mix? Okay, we're dealing with science here. All right, right now there's there's all this, uh, there's a lot of violence going on. You can, I mean, Scott Johnson's been reporting on this thing. And again, I, you know, I have many disagreements with Dr. Scott Johnson. But the fact is there's, I mean, racial violence, you know, violence between different people, uh, it happens all the time. But you get people where they're living among their own kind there. And, and again, I'm not saying I'm putting one down and lifting one up. I'm just saying you bring all those people together, you're going to have problems. You know, I mean, I'm going to get ahead of myself here. There's a comment coming up I want to read here. But uh, uh, living among and around different kindreds doesn't equate to the mixing of kindreds, uh, which some folks seem, don't seem to understand. When Phelps said he wants a white state nation pro call and gave honor unto the likes of Malcolm X for his very similar stance and views. The Holy Ghost did not bear witness with nor to the truth, and these verses of Scripture came to mind. Um, and he quotes 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, uh, which, you know, has nothing to do with, with people living together or integrated or separate or whatever else. So, you know, some really weird arguments people coming up with here. Um, Teal, teal turn, I guess. Uh, all people will naturally segregate themselves. Go to any big city and you will see it happen. People just naturally want to be with their own race, so it is a good thing. God himself segregated the races at the Tower of Babel. Public schools were forcefully integrated in America. Blacks and whites opposed it, but the Jesuits decided it did not matter what we wanted. They know what is best for us. Our schools are in a mess right now because of it. Absolutely. The media conditions us to believe that whites need to feel guilty. As racist old white people, they are the only one that can be racist. <laughs> exactly why I'm being attacked by a lot of people. You know, somehow you could have uh, Reconquista, you know, Mexicans coming out and saying, we want to take over the southern part of America. And it's like, well, that's not really racist. You know, let's not give them a hard time. And you have blacks coming out from down south and saying, we have an all black school or we have an all black, you know, ebony newspaper or something like this. We don't want white people in it. And I. I don't subscribe to the thing, so somebody's probably going to say, well, I have an addition that there's a white man. Yeah, I'm sure, you know. Get the exception to overthrow the rule, of course. But, you know, and they'll say, well, that's racism. 
you know, or that's, that's good, um, excuse me. They can call themselves African-American or Mexican-American or Latino or something, but if I say I'm a German-American, I instantly get the Nazi thing. Why? Well, the Jesuits are programming people, just like this person right here said. But uh, yes, and the public schools are forcibly being integrated. Uh, it's a Jesuit um, tactic. Uh, again, I went to a little small farm community school, Peckway Valley High School in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. There were very few black people that, that uh, were in the area. Um, but there was a couple that went to the school and they got picked on, terribly picked on. You know, why? Well, there's issues there. Again, an, another thing, uh, I had a buddy that um, his father-in-law worked for a big printing company in Lancaster County called Donnelly. If you're from the area, you probably have heard of that. And he said in the break room, he said they would naturally segregate. The blacks would sit at the black table. You know, the, the table wasn't black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They'd sit with all the other black people. The Puerto Ricans would sit with all the Puerto Ricans. The whites would sit with all the whites. That's just the way it was. Nobody told them to do it. Nobody forced them to do it. They just naturally did it. You know? You know? I mean, and, and uh, one of you says, I'm going to be showing the comment here. One of you says about the thing of you go into prison, what happens in prison? They segregate in prison. Nobody's forcing them to do it. Just incredible. But let me show you a thing here on the Jesuits. Uh, this is the uh, Jesuit Refugee Service. This is one of their own websites. Okay, the spirituality of accompaniment. Uh, this Tuesday, December eighth, uh, Father David Hollenbach, uh, Society of Jesus, delivered an Advent Sacred Let Lecture on the spirituality of accompaniment. He's one of the ones that's involved in this thing. But look at all these stories put out by the Jesuits on the thing of integration. Um, Putting Mercy in Motion, JRS launches Global Education Initiative for Refugees. Uh, there's the thing about Pope Francis going to Africa, saying that, that the Muslims are brothers and sisters of Christians. Well, brothers and sisters of Catholics, that's true, but not of Bible-believing Christians. Grammy winner Emmy Lou Harris partners with Jesuit Refugee Service to promote refugee education. Isn't that nice? I mean, you integrationists... Jump on board. You know, go right right ahead there. Take action. We must welcome refugees. Sure. Syrian refugees deserve welcome, not rejection. Uh-huh. Down here, United States can and should be a leader in refugee protection and resettlement. Yeah, sure, let the terrorists come in. And Islam is terrorism too, by the way. It's not some kind of a... Uh, well, it's actually peaceful or something. No, it's not. There you have Pope Francis welcomes JRS, uh, supports Global Education Initiative for Refugee Children and Youth. It's the Catholics that are behind this thing. I mean, good night. You, you have to be blind to not see this. Here you have uh, Jesuit Refugee Service, Syria. 12 million people forced from their homes. Yeah, the Jesuits, the, the Vatican goes in, inspires these stupid wars, bombing the snot out of their country, and then says, okay, you need to leave. Why? Well, we're bombing it, but don't worry, we'll resettle you where we want you to be. You know, and the Jesuit Vatican, you know, the Jesuits are, are the CIA. That's like the American branch of the Jesuits. The, C, uh, the CIA and, and uh, a lot of their drug operations and things like that, you know, they're, they've been doing this thing for a long time. And they're controlling the military. They're going out and doing these crusades for the Vatican. You know, America is like the right, the strong arm of the Vatican when it comes to uh, military police actions. <laughs> and so they go, they attack the people of Syria, force them out of their homes, force them out of their country, and then spread them out. They're forcibly integrating. And, you know, I saw somebody wrote a comment there like, yes, but integration is not the same as interracial marriage. Uh, well, actually, interracial marriage is integration. Okay. I mean, you're just sending people into the area where they could leave. You don't want that. You want to be able to send them in and have a mix kindreds to integrate the people. Then the integration is permanent. But it says here, helping the vulnerable in Syria's conflict. Yeah, who caused the conflict? Uh, more than 12 million persons, more than half of the entire population of the country, are in serious jeopardy due to the ongoing conflict in Syria caused by the Vatican. The very people that they're saying, you know, oh, we need to, to resettle these and educate these dear, you know, refugees. Well, quit bombing their country. They won't have to resettle. 
but it goes on. I'm not going to read all that stuff there. But uh, Lebanon, Syrian children need more than a traditional education. Uh, before and after displacement through a Syrian refugee child's eyes. Uh, this is important here. Syria, why people flee and why they need protection. Um, Syrians, Syrians face impossibly high prices for food and water, daily blackouts, and destroyed homes because of the Vatican. Uh, JRS Syria director Father Nauras Samor, Society of Jesus, explains why Syrians flee, why they need safe and legal paths to access asylum, and why they desperately need peace in order to rebuild their lives and their country. See, this is why God's wrath is going to come upon the Vatican and he's going to destroy uh, Vatican City in an hour in Revelation chapter 18. Uh, they're just, they're disgusting serpents. Uh, just, just, ugh. The, the Roman Catholic hierarchy um, is going to burn in hell and I can't wait to see that happening. I mean, Revelation chapter 19, we're up there throwing a party when they're destroyed. Okay, we're, we're having a good old time yelling hallelujah and everything. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be another, you know, there's a lot of good things about the rapture, and that's going to be another good one. Because knowing that when we leave, you get the time of Jacob's trouble, and at the end, we're going to see, or towards the end there, we're going to see Mystery Babylon, the Vatican, just being totally wiped out. Because they do this kind of disgusting stuff. They go in, they cause the wars, they kill the people, and then they forcibly integrate them into other societies. Now, I guarantee you, a lot of these Syrians probably don't even want to leave, you know. But just it, so disgusting. Anyways, let's get back to some of these more more of these comments. Uh, path is narrow, so every white couple sees eye to eye. Hmm. See, little word games here. It just irritates me. Um, whoever you are there, uh, I didn't say that in the study. Don't lie about me. I didn't say that, that uh, people that are of the same kindred are going to get along perfectly and never argue. That's not going to happen. But it's going to happen a lot less than people are that are of interracial marriage. Veronica MGL. So I'm Spanish. I speak Spanish. I learn English because I go to England and speak in English. Is that wrong because we can have evil conversations? Jesus paid for all that. We are under grace, not like an excuse for liberty, but fearing the Lord. Where is the peace which surpasses all understanding in you? I have it. Um, then quotes Ecclesiastes 7, 16, verses, uh, 16 through 17 there, excuse me. Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? Well, you need to quote the King James Bible there, Veronica. You're not even, you're quoting a Vatican version. So, you have other issues, apparently. Um, King James Bible. One thing is certain. The world is pushing race mixing. That alone speaks volumes. Exactly. Thank you, brother, for putting that up there. You know, the world pushes race mixing. Shouldn't that tell you something? Shouldn't it tell you when you have movie after movie after movie and all this propaganda out there, whenever you see um, secular universities being advertised, it's white and black and Hispanic and everything. They're all mixed together. Uh, you see movies uh, like, uh, um, what was the one? Uh, the Bodyguard, it was called. Yeah, Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner falling in love. And ironically, at the time, I was a lost man dating a girl from Costa Rica, a... Spaniard, and we went to see the movie. You know, so so don't act like, oh, you know, you just you you're raised in some prejudiced, bigoted thing. No, actually, I was very much for integration for at one point in time before the Lord saved me. So don't tell me about it. But uh, continuing here, he says, I don't think anyone can disagree that it is natural to be attracted towards someone like you. Why fool yourselves? The world is forcing everyone to reject what is natural and accept race mixing. God loves diversity, but he wants it kept that way. All that being said, I also think that there are some exceptions. If two believers who are of different kindred race marry, then that is not a problem. It is supposed to be a testament to the world that this, which would normally be viewed as unnatural weird, is to be pecul peculiarity to the world. However, the world has destroyed this by mixing, making race mixing a norm instead of being uh, viewed as peculiar and wondering why two different races are marrying, to which the answer is, we are both in Christ. Race mixing without Jesus Christ as the glue for the marriage will oftentimes result in scenarios like this picture. What can change in three years? Uh, someone is missing. Someone has been added. Don't know what you have there on the thing there. But, uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm not going to agree with that. You know, I'm not going to say that, well, 
you know, as long as you're in Christ, it doesn't, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a poor testimony, if nothing else. I mean, can two people of different kindreds be married and, and be saved? Of course. I never said that they couldn't. But the point is, when you do that, you're going to have a hard time witnessing and testifying to people of those two separate kindreds. And especially when you have children, if God gives you children, who are they going to fit in with? Again, why is it, why is it wrong for people to simply say, hey, I, I appreciate these different kindreds I showed earlier, that traditional dress and everything else, and I appreciate the people in their native land, in their traditional costumes, staying as they are, and not just blending everybody into this, into this soupy, goopy America, you know? And, you know, people, again, why aren't you going to leave America if you're feeling so strong? Well, I am going to leave America. It's called come up hither, and then I leave. I mean, they're destroying uh, my native land of Germany, and I can't go back to Germany. I've talked about that in other studies. Uh, I'm here because, again, if I went back to Germany, I'd probably be in jail for a lot of the things I've preached. Um, so I'm here. I'm going to stay in this country until the Lord says, leave. And if the Lord would open up some kind of a deal with it, you know, there'd be some area of Germany that's not been totally integrated and mixed up or whatever, and the Lord would make it possible for my wife, myself, and my son to go to Germany, and he makes it definitely, hey, go, I'm going. I'll follow the Lord's leading in that. Um, CFN, he's compared humans to dogs and fallen angels. No wonder why he is losing support. <laughs> okay, you know, well, again, uh, this ministry is not about... Um, pleasing people. I want to please the Lord and I want to stand by His Word no matter who it offends. And, you know, simply what I was trying to say, the point I was trying to say about the thing of dogs, uh, you don't get purebred dogs by taking down fences. You get them by putting fences up. Okay? Let me use your brain here. Hebrews 1.8 I'm 100% against integration, immigration, integration, immigration, invasion, and conquering. That also, especially of satanic cults, is Islam. But all those terms def don't define intermarrying, which is totally different and is a different scenario. Integration does not mean intermarriage. Yes, it does. Don't blend, fuse, merge these terms. P.S. You look Jewish. You are Jewish. N-O-M. I don't know what that means. But, uh, you know, okay, again, I'm not Jewish. Let's cover that. Uh, but secondly, the thing of... Um, integration and interracial marriage are two different things. No, they're not. Interracial marriage is permanently integrating a couple. Um, I dated interracially, but we did not get married, and we didn't have any children. See, if I had done that, then my child would be permanently integrated. He's not Spanish. He's not German. He's blended. You see? And where would we live? The particular girl that I knew, the both girls that I knew, the one you know wanted to come to America, the one from Honduras, but the other one, she liked hot clim climates. She liked warm climates. She hated facial hair. She hated a lot of other things that I was into and I believed in. You know, I would have had to compromise for her. She would have had to try to compromise for me. I couldn't stand living down in the tropics of Costa Rica. It had driven me crazy. She couldn't have stand living up in northern Maine, where my wife and I live right now. You see? Problems. Nave Wilson, you look more like a Jew than a German. I highly, highly doubt you are of pure German heritage. Oh, uh, well, take that up with the Lord. Uh, I'm not Jewish. Um, unless you're talking about spiritually, I'm adopted. I'm an adopted child of my Jewish Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Veronica MGL, about, as the, about the as the days of Noah, uh, where you where you spoke about, there's still a thing to come. And she quotes another new version there. Veronica, you need to use the King James Bible. You're not going to follow, find the truth reading these new versions that come from the Vatican, uh, from the Alexandrian, Egyptian, Greek, uh, perverted Bible that came out. Uh, Rav Ravinder Jit Singh, Matthew 24, 37 through 39. Brian, ignore about the eating and drinking part and only focuses on marriage, but both should be addressed together. During Noah's time, they didn't anticipate of the coming judgment, and it will be the same when Jesus returns. Nothing, nothing to do with marriage, eating and drinking, for these are the norms. Okay, um, again, look at the context. I covered this stuff, you know. Uh, yes, it was about 
marriage. You go back to uh, Genesis chapter 6, before the flood, it's specifically talking about sons of God taking the daughters of men. That's marriage. Just as plain as the nose on your face. All right. Um... Path is narrow. One more. Should Italians remove tomato sauce from their culture? Tomatoes came from North America. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not even going to waste any time on that one. People, come on. <laughs> Deal with the scriptures. You know, Joseph Dunn, I am fairly new to your ministry and I enjoy your videos. And most of all, I am glad that you stand strong for the King James Bible. I was wondering which study Bible you would recommend. Please help me with this. Thanks. Check the re. Why? Okay, um, somebody said I did a video about that topic. It's kind of old, but very helpful. You should look for it in his channel. Yeah, uh, the best KJV study Bibles, uh, Joseph. That, that would be the one I would recommend. All right, next we have Stephen Thomas. So many contradictions, errors, and sweeping, all-encompassing false statements. I simply do not know where to begin. I agree with you. Yeah, integration is a very wicked system, and the Roman Catholic system is so wicked and corrupt. There's just so many horrible things that they do. So, yeah, I agree with you. I'm being sarcastic, okay, if people don't know, because I'm going to get that in the comments. He was just, you know, he was talking about you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Randall Witten. Thank you, Brian, for speaking the truth. Don't be discouraged. Continue with your faithful ministry. The evil and deception will grow worse. Amen, brother. Absolutely. Adam Shu, I guess is how you're saying that. Hey, can you do a video on the Millennial Kingdom? Thanks, brother, and good sermon. Well, thank you, and uh, I'm going to be working on that. Uh, there's a lot of very interesting things uh, that you can read in the King James Bible about the Millennial Kingdom that are just really encouraging and uh, make you look forward to the catching away and then getting into that time. Okay, just thinking, one, I'm of European descent and my wife is of Asian descent. We've been married for 12 years now. I recently asked my wife for a divorce because I feel we are in sin by not being in obedience to the Word of God, the King James Bible. We have no children, so that's not a concern. We are both born-again Christians, but I realize the error we made, and if the King James Bible teaches it is a sin, sin to be married to someone from another kindred, then I suppose the thing to do is correct this sin and get a divorce. Thanks, Brian, for opening my eyes in this matter. Well, that's something that you're going to need to pray about. I don't know all the situation. I, you know, again, I can't comment on that. You know, I mean, somebody could write something like that trying to trap me. I don't know. I don't know the whole situation. I don't know what's going on. You know, that's between you and the Lord and, you know, the two of you and the Lord. I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, Runes Wick. Interesting name. Um, you keep calling these people false prophets, and then and they're trying to do something similar to you. Does that mean you're a true prophet? If you wouldn't consider yourself a prophet, then you're just using it as a derogatory term. Uh, which people am I calling false prophets? I'd have to see the study again there. Um, you know, a prophet can be somebody that, that sends warning. It can also be somebody that prophesies future events. Uh, I do do a little bit of both. I don't consider myself an actual prophet by name, but, you know, you read the King James Bible, it gives accurate predictions of the future. So in that sense, there's a prophetic ministry there. And, of course, I do point out sins of this nation and other nations. And so I'm pointing those out because judgment is coming from God. So in that sense, prophet, yeah, but, you know, I don't call myself that. Um, happiness, right? Hi, friend. I agree with some of what you are saying, and I respect your beliefs and teaching here. I just don't come into agreement with it. I, for example, am mixed from various European backgrounds, but I did not necessarily feel a kindred spirit to other families of similar ancestry, demographic, and location I grew up around. I have significant German ancestry myself, but, for example, wouldn't say I identify as a German person. I thumb this video down not because I am bothered or upset or angry about it, or think that you are a bigot, but simply because I don't come into agreement with it, and don't feel the case you are making is conscious, or oh, excuse me, concise, or of clear, simple logic. I will say some races don't seem to mix well. I would be cautious about a descendant of Isaac marrying a descendant of Ishmael, for example. But I can't say this about all nations. I respect you for uh, sharing your independent study on the subject. However, constructive criticism—that's fine. You know, people don't have to agree with me. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, King James Believer. Notice Pocahontas and John Smith. Ever wonder why Disney tried to turn it into a love affair, mixing of the races? The real story suggests they were not lovers. Tragic, the story of her real husband, which was interracial. Okay, and there's, I was looking at some of the back and forth on that. But, you know, yeah. 
Again, the world promoting interracial marriage. Why are Christians doing it? Um, Alfred Ramos. Uh, to, um, to those that want to continue to discriminate against a brother or sister for being of another race, kindred, nationality, ethnicity, read Matthew 25, 31 through 46, where the word stranger is used. Uh, the law first mentioned makes it clear that the word stranger means foreigner, as used in Genesis 15, 13. Okay, got to take a break here. My uh, son is just woke up from his nap. Sounds like he uh, needs some attention. So my wife just ran upstairs. Be right back with you. All right, I'm back. Uh, please pray for our son. He's teething right now. He's got five teeth coming in. So uh, already has four of them. Got five more coming. So <laughs> going through some pain. That's why he wakes up from his naps and he's crying and stuff. So continuing here. Um, Frat, Frater S.H. Sederingrad Productions. Okay, he says, you're losing it, Brian. You're really getting into some weird territory. How about doing just Christ's words? You can you can quote it and then add commentary to it. I tell you, man, I really liked your Amish series, Stephen Andersnake and Post Trib Debunks, but this stuff, no. You don't have to like everything. That's fine. But uh, I'm not losing it. It's what the Bible teaches. Um, uh, Ryan D., thank you, Brother Brian. It's always a blessing. Praise the Lord. First Unicorn. Uh, says, Brian has this whole interracial marriage thing very wrong. It is all because he does not know what kindred means. If he would actually look up the definition of the word kindred, it means a person's family, relatives, spouse, etc. It has nothing about ethnicity. Uh, actually, it does if you read the King James Bible. Kindred is used for ethnicity. Um, the only two rules for Christian marriage is to marry the opposite sex and be equally yoked believers with believers. That's it. It's simple. Uh, okay, well, what do you do about the verses in Ezra and Nehemiah and all throughout the Bible? Uh, no, it's not quite that uh, clear cut. Uh, Larry Jessup, about 50 years ago when I was a little kid, I remember an old lady saying, I never saw a blue jay dating a cardinal in reference to what was on TV in the 60s. Okay, a lot of older people had wisdom back then. That's very true. Uh, you don't see nature intermarrying. Okay, think about that. Uh, let's see. Um, I love being me, not f for you to like. <laughs> you, sir, should not be teaching scripture. Okay, then go someplace else. Uh, T L L E T turn. Good point about the Apostle Paul. Many do not realize that Paul spent his last days lonely and rejected all the churches of Asia, turned again, away from him. He said they tried to stone Moses. Time and again, many don't realize that Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, was thrown out of the Baptist Union with people cheering his ouster because he would not compromise. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been there, and uh, if this ministry ever gets shut down online, well, it's not going to be because I was compromising. Uh, A.G. Silverbear, Paul says, we are not to make distinctions amongst ourselves. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Already answered that. Uh, the Bible goes on to say there's neither male nor female, so... Sorry there, it doesn't work that way. Paul says that there are three categories of people on the earth today. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Uh, Brian, your teaching that we are required to segregate the body of Christ by race is, con is contrary to the teaching of Paul, our apostles, to the Gentiles. You need to repent. I will pray for you. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but uh, I did not say that we need to segregate the body of Christ. Uh, you're a liar. I didn't say that. Um... Whatever. I mean, I covered it in my study. I'm not going to get into it. Christopher Dudley. Why would God protect Native American idolaters from having their land taken? Uh, I don't really understand the purpose of that question. Um, they, their land was taken from them. I don't know. Uh, TZ, TZ um, here to sort the wheat from the chaff. Pretty much. Um, young, young and X. 88788. As a black man, I just want to say thank you for preaching God's word, words in spite of feelings and emotions. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, brother, for your comment. Uh, Warbler Rab 295. Brian, you're nuts. Um, it took you this long to figure that out? <laughs> we always joke about it, my wife and I. You know, we'll, we'll eat 
uh, different things and we'll, you know, like ice cream sometimes on occasion, you know, we'll put some uh, peanuts with it or we'll put pumpkin seeds in our salad and things like that. And we always joke and say, you know, do you want any nuts for your salad? And we'll say, well, you are what you eat, you know. Say, so, yeah, I know, we're both nuts. So, thank you for the compliment. Uh, CVB, I just keep thinking of Paul's warning to us not to put any confidence in the flesh. All the cultures of the world were based on the worship of false gods. There's nothing to preserve. Uh, yes, there is. I just showed him up there. <laughs> okay. The critic, Brian, is 100% correct. Look up Gates Wide Open in YouTube. Okay, I don't know what that is, but okay, thank you. Um, by his grace, the sister writes, My main comment is on part two, but let me say this briefly. My faith is deepened more and more in the book. In this book, the King James Bible, God's Holy Word, when things are being proven by Scripture, exposing the lies and revealing the truth, praise God. The Lord shows me that I can truly trust in His Word in all matters of faith and practices. God has spoken. We can either accept it and obey, or we can reject it and disobey. But we all will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment. Brother, keep laboring in the Word, and your works shall be rewarded. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Thank you, sister. I do appreciate that. Um, Eric Rosam. Don't be discouraged, brother. The true followers of Christ understand. And I've seen that. Uh, odd interviews. Uh, Joshua Alver Alvarez, I don't agree with you, yet I'm looking forward to finishing your video. Thanks. And, uh, you know, I saw Brother Joshua here, you know, actually said, okay, I am convinced now in the second part of the video. But see, that right there shows an objective mind. I don't agree with you, yet I'm looking forward to finishing the video. He's not answering the matter before he hears it. I mean, technically he's saying, hey, I don't agree with this, but I'm actually going to be open-minded enough to look into this and see what the scriptures actually say. That's an objective mind right there. Old YT channel. See how big is this thing? Brother, I think you did a great study and I learned a lot. I would just like to say that there are very few faithful Bible-believing born-again Christians in this wicked world. You obviously know this. That's true. I believe that between the liberty we have and being part of the body of Christ that we are able to marry different kindreds even though it isn't ideal based on the word. I'm not promoting integration, however. I also want a wife one day, and I'm still confused, but I'll wait on God and see if he has someone for me. I really enjoy your preaching, and I'm blessed by it, so please continue with your work. Thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, Ravinder Jit Singh says, racist. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you're a racist. That's a shame. Um, King James Believer. Brian, I would love to see any one of these interracial proponents spend one week in Max Prison Gen pop and see how well they fare trying to just blend in. I'm willing to bet they pick a race and which toilet to use first day. Exactly. <laughs> Refer to that earlier. Thank you, brother. You're absolutely right. Robert Schultz II. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I have been engaged to a woman of mixed race for four years now. She's finally coming to me now so we can be married, but I don't want to go against God's word. I am also mixed race, German on my dad's side, French, Canadian, Indian, and Irish on my mother's side. Please pray for me, brothers and sisters. Pray about it. That's what I've been saying. Pray about it. And by the way, if a situation like that, I would simply go with what kindred your father is. So um, I'm not just saying that because he said his is German. Okay, so don't go there. Uh, King James Shield. I believe the Hebrew language is of Shem, the Latin language is of Japheth, and the Greek language is of Ham. Since the Hebrew-speaking people, the Jews, are Shemitic, and there's a lot of similarities between Latin, English, and Spanish, plus the fact that Japheth's descendants are the Europeans. Well, uh, from my studies, it's, it's uh, Japheth is the Greek there, and Latin is from Ham. You can agree, agree or disagree with that. doesn't really matter. Uh, Joshua Baker. Brother Brian, if people have a problem with your speech, they need to grow up. There are way too many thin-skinned, sensitive folks out there. Honestly, there are too many Christians that act like little babies. Amen. Amen. I agree. Again, you know, well, I don't appreciate this and stuff. Oh, it's heritage. You're a pervert. You're this, you're that. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to take your thumb out of your mouth long enough to type. But, you know, go play someplace else, okay? Um, King James Believer never realized the three languages on the cross resemble the three sons of Noah. Good stuff, brother. Yep. Uh, Tietel turn uh, the Jesuits realize that as a general rule the white race has been their most effective enemy we are the ones that have seen through their deceptions so we are the greatest their greatest target to be discredited in every way ever wonder why we believe 
Germans are evil Nazis, uh, Jew haters, and just evil in general. It's because Germany led the way in throwing down the rule of the Pope, so they must be slandered and destroyed in the Jesuit-controlled media. Uh, the Vatican feared America at one time with good reasons. We outlawed the idolatrous worship of the Mass, and we taught all the Vatican's evil history in our schools, so they had to integrate America and destroyed it at the time of the Revolutionary War when they started to take over this country through immigration. So, very true. Uh, Stephen Griffin, of course, there is a lot more study in the Bible. I have to do myself, but I do have to study that. Do have to say that he makes very convincing arguments in all his videos. Clearing, clearly, a good student of the Bible, he is. Well, praise the Lord, thank you. Um, but again, objective. Okay, study the Bible. The Bible's your standard. Fly bo Flyboy Vet 1119. Brother, I am so on board with your mess messages, I want to contact you. Well, you know, I've talked about that in other videos. Um, I'm going to be possibly doing some more stuff with Skype or something in the future. I don't know yet. Maybe some live broadcast type of stuff. Again, I'm not sure. But um, as far as giving out my phone number and things, I just don't do it. Uh, I did in the past, and there were some people that abused it, and it was just, they had no, uh, no respect for my time, and they would just call and talk for an hour or more. And I'd be like, yeah, okay, well, I got it. Yeah. Well, I, I got to get going. It, you know, so I was just like, okay, new policy? No. That's why it's like that. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I've had different people, you know, I've met here locally and stuff, and I even had a brother come here to our ministry headquarters, and I talked to him. So, you know, it's not like I'm, we're hiding from the body of Christ or something up here. No, it's just we're very, very busy. You know, again, uh, you know, my wife and I were just talking about this, and, I was, and she was like, you know, a lot of these people, it's like, don't they have any kind of a life other than commenting on YouTube? I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, we have a lot of stuff going you know, we have a life outside of computer world. But uh, KJV Defense, Brian, this is controversial, politically incorrect, and offensive. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. CFM 1181, why are you so racist towards unsound doctrine? Ha, 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 keep doing your thing, brother. Okay. <laughs> kind of funny, too, there. Uh, wake, wake you up, people. Oh, boy. Um... Uh, keep video or good video keep up the good work all the wealthy southerners speaking Queens English move into my local city taking best jobs also in houses locals can't afford set up middle upper class people's churches I asked one guy on the door how come no one here apart from one person speaks with a local accent he said like attracts like um, not going to read this whole comment there's just a, a bunch of stuff in here Culture, creed, and to colonize with other blacks and be obsessed with race. Sorry. Okay, I don't get all that thing there, but uh, some of that stuff I'm not going to read because it's just simply too long and there's not, it's not a direct question, it's just commenting. Um, Ocean View, amen, brother, I totally agree. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Abby Mail, Omar LS, great video. Uh, Willie Water Bug. Brother Brian, Chad here, you are correct. The message is not about racism, but about the world system trying to force uh, one order into everyone. I'm surprised how many people don't get the message here. KJV, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Um, for when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that they should overtake you as a thief. Did you notice that the GOP and DNC and the president and the media are all saying peace and safety over and over and over while claiming citizens are intolerant unless we give up our rights and allow refugees in who our own FBI said cannot be vetted? We are getting very close. Amen. Amen. I totally agree with that one. Um, okay, that's it for that one. Now we're going to zip up here. Go to part two. I'm just going to have to skim down through these. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here. Um, I actually replied to her because I thought this was pretty ridiculous. Uh, Chava Karen, she says here, this te the teaching was good, but I believe this is for the Israelites. God's chosen people, and remember that Jesus' bloodline came, comes from Boaz, marriage to a Moabite. Again, I answered that in the study. And who knows what Rahab's nationality was, but I think you being German has a lot to do with your teaching and anger 
with what's going on in Germany. Just as many, or just as most people there have a history of racism since World War II. Oh, so Germans are Nazis again. Germany hates Jews, blacks, and any other race that, and any and any other race not theirs. It's sad that this must happen with believers, but God said there will be a division among brethren. Okay, um, and I wrote, when did I say that I hate anyone because of their essence or based on their ethnic <coughs> ethnicity? <laughs> I'll get it out yet. You know, uh, okay, continuing down here, Jim Beckwith, hey Brian, you are, you're not politically correct, so you must be spot on with the Bible, laugh out loud. Hey, you're learning that too, aren't you, brother, uh, with uh, some of the videos you put out, but, um, you know, being politically correct is, is almost impossible for a Bible believer. Okay, there. I mean, there are times we can be gentle and meek and mild and everything else. But I mean, when evil is there, you just have to call it evil, and it's not going to be politically correct. Uh, Brother Brian McClurg here says there's so much more to do or to this study too. The giants after the flood came through Canaan. How can I contact you, Brian? Again, um, you know, send me a private message if you have to get in contact with me and maybe work something out or whatever. But uh, Sister Gabriella here. Um, she says, very good teaching, brother. I open her. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to just, I'm just going to go down through here. I'm not going to read um, different people's, you know, that I've read comments be from before, just simply because I'm trying to keep this thing short. Darren Lees, Brother Brian Nellinger, why did you make this video? Because I'm a Bible-believing preacher. Are you against people in interracial marriage? Uh, do you look down on them? You consider them to be living in sin. You yourself said that this is a sin. Well, the Bible says it's a sin. Back in the book of uh, Ezra, especially. Um, are we now going to say that they must separate and divorce? The Bible says clearly in Genesis, we, everyone, are made in God's image and likeness. I really don't understand why you are against this. Uh, well, um, Adam was created in God's image and after his likeness, but after Adam, there was the flood, and then there were three sons with distinct kindred distinction and God said I don't want you all together I want you split up so t to say we're all of one blood and there should there's no difference or, or we're all made in God's image and after his likeness there's no difference there's no distinction um, understand brethren again the distinctions are a gift that's the beauty of what God created I'm not looking and saying you know I hate black people they're ugly or they're terrible and horrible and they should look like me I'm not saying that I'm saying you're beautiful the way God made you be thankful for how God made you don't try to look like you're a white person and if you're white don't try to look like you're black and if you're black don't try to look like you're uh, oriental or something like that be thankful for how God made you that's the point of this whole thing and when you intermarry when you take two different people from obviously very distinctive different you know kindreds and you blend them together and you have children, those children have lost the unique characteristics of their parents. Don't tell me that they haven't. I mean, I, you know, look at Obama. You know, there again, I'll tell you a little story. My wife told me this story about when she was going to the one university and they got into an argument, uh, some students on this thing of, uh, you know, um, the Obama's the first black president or something like that. And, and the guy was like, I, f I forget. She said something about, well, he's not white. And there was a black guy sitting there and, you know, black student. And he said, well, he's not black. You know, see, both groups say we don't want anything to do with them. That's the way it is. Uh, Tommy Dunn, I will quickly show you, quickly show you or show, but if you marry someone from a different race who is a Christian, it is not a sin. Firstly, you, you are of the same tongue because it is one that is surrendered to God. Secondly, you are of the same kindred because you are brothers and sisters in Christ. And lastly, you are of the same nation because this world is not our home. We are strangers here or sojourners, but we are citizens of the kingdom of God, which means uh, his share, his common boundary. Okay, uh, Tommy, well, then why does God preserve distinctions when we get to heaven? And again, are you saying... All of you integrationists, all you people that are for interracial marriage, are you saying that all kindred ethnicities, all distinctions among people should be totally wiped out by intermarriage? So everybody's just a blended, you know, mass of people and no, distinct, no distinctions anymore. Or is it just for the white people that, that this stuff happens? You know? 
Kazek Thranduil. Oh boy, this helps the calls, Brian. I actually think I might be a Christian if it weren't for your videos. <laughs> okay, uh, well there, buddy. Um, you know, ninja or whatever you're supposed to be there. Uh, that's that's the same thing that, uh, uh, was it uh, Gandhi or something? I think he said, you know, the thing that keeps me from being a Christian is Christians. Uh, that's a statement of a hypocrite. Um, you don't believe in Brian Denlinger to be saved. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You put your faith in Him. Okay? The thing that keeps you from being a Christian is you don't want to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I have nothing to do with that. There's a lot of people who are saved and totally disagree with me. Why? I'm not their Savior. Jesus is. So you're a hypocrite. And you better get down on your knees and you better get your life right between you and God and you and Him alone. And don't use Christians as your excuse for going to hell. All right? Warren Barth, Brian, brother, don't claim your ancestors fled Catholic oppression to, to come to America. Actually, they did. They were Anabaptist, okay? Mennonite. Um, the Denlingers and the Brubakers, my father's side. We all know the German, Germanic countries were solidly Protestant. If anything, your ancestors, like 90% of Americans and many of today's Arab refugees, immigrated for opportunity, welfare, and a chance at more money. Um, you know, well, the, uh, you know, the whole fact of the matter is I can't say exactly what my ancestors, you know, purpose was for coming to America. I mean, I can't exactly spell it out, but I know for a fact that they were Anabaptist, you know, so they weren't Protestant. Um, Brianna Lee Benno, I'm probably pronouncing your name wrong, sister. Sorry about that. 50 minutes and 23 seconds through 50 minutes and 42 seconds, she says, I said this recently in a comment I'd made on one of your videos. My niece is half black and half white. As I have said, she is not going to be able to grow up understanding what her culture is. She's going to have to choose one she prefers instead of just knowing. That distinction is lost. People were so offended because I said that truth is offensive. Lies are sweet poison. Amen, sister. Exactly. Very, very true. Again, um, uh, one of the brothers I used to actually be in ministry with, Brother Jesse Dulesky, his younger sister's husband, if I get this right, he was white, and when he was in college, he had a fornication uh, event with a black girl, and it produced a child. They had a son together, and neither of them wanted this, this poor little boy. And that boy, I, I saw him the one time, he was at a birthday party for Brother Jesse's uh, son, and this little boy was just, he was bad. He was really, really, really bad. I mean, you could just, you, you couldn't control the boy. And it's a problem. It's a, it's a really sad situation. Uh, I, JKA Doodle. Skin color is just a uh, amount of pigment in the skin. I definitely don't agree with you on this one. Okay, um, so there are no differences between a, a Jew, a African, a Japanese a man or woman, um, a German, a whatever. There's no differences. It's just all skin color. Uh, no, again, we're all different. I mean, it's like I don't understand people. Why can't you see the beauty of what God created? I mean, like I said, I'm a wood turner. I've worked with woods from all over the world. And each wood has its own unique characteristics. They have their own smell. They have their own, you. I mean, just beauty. I mean, some of the most beautiful woods in the world come from Africa, but they won't grow here in this country. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, redwood trees, giant redwood trees out on the west coast of America, they won't grow in northern Maine. Uh, palm trees aren't going to grow in northern Maine. You see, there are certain areas where those trees grow and thrive, and we can enjoy those trees for what they are. Why should we hybridize all the trees and just have one type of tree in the world? See, that's insanity. But it's not insane somehow if you integrate all the kindreds. Eliminate distinction. You know, the, the pictures I shared earlier of all the traditional dress up there, you know, and the, the beautiful outfits and, and the way that these people look and everything, that's all just wrong. We should all just have everybody just messed together like that, just stuck together. One big gelatinous goo, I guess. Um, J.J. Navarro. 
writes, I don't get you. You tell post-tribbers Matthew 24 is talking to Jews only. It is. Um, but when you teach interracial marriage, you spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, which God deals mostly with Israel exclus exclusively and not the body of Christ. You violated 2 Timothy 2.15. No, I'm sim simply showing what God thinks of it. And by the way, like I said in my study, if you go back before the giving of the law and you compare what how God is dealing with, you know, Abraham specifically in that time period, a lot of the things God is, is the standards and things God's putting on him still apply to us today. Uh, you know, the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. You know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So you go through the whole Bible. And now if there were some clear scriptures in the New Testament where God said, hey, it doesn't matter anymore who you marry, um, whatever kindred, whatever people, let's all be one. If God undid what he said in Genesis chapter 11, then I'd say, okay, hey, all right, you know, I'll, I'll back off on this whole issue. But there's nothing like that. That's the issue here. Um, you know, and here he says, uh, there's no new... new uh, there's no New Testament scripture that stand alone that support your belief without going back and forth in Old Testament. Forbidding to marry is a doctrine of devils, according to Paul writing to my half-Jew Greek brother Timothy. Uh, well, okay, uh, well, um, forbidding to marry there has nothing to do with me saying, hey, you shouldn't interracial marry. Uh, forbidding to marry is what the Catholics do. It's called celibacy. All right, so that's not what that scripture means at all. CVB says, Titus wasn't circumcised, circumcision availeth nothing. You have now been admonished numerous times. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Uh, Stevie6621, this was a great talk. God bless. Amen. Praise the Lord. The KJV Bible Advocate, wow, this was another good one, packed with nothing but scripture. Look at that like bar. Beautiful. <laughs> that shows how much Brian cares about what man thinks. Laugh out loud. This is going to be a popular one for sure. I appreciate the fact that you understand my humor, brother. Um, of course, I've noticed that Bible believers generally have the same, you know, kind of a dry, sarcastic sense of humor. That's one thing we definitely share in common, no matter what our kindred is. But because uh, the Holy Spirit leads in all truth, that's why. Uh, Eric 5335, in the verses in the Old Testament commanding against and warning the Israelites of marrying foreigners, the focus is always that the foreigners have false gods and will bring their wickedness into the community. Uh, and, you know, but again, uh, what do you get when you get somebody from another country, another kindred, um, and somebody from this one over here? They're going to have different beliefs. They're going to have different holidays that they celebrate and different things and whatever, superstitions and whatever else. So those gods, those false gods are still there. So you'd mess with somebody of a different kindred today, you're still going to have the same problems. So again, it's not proven anything. Um, just trying to see here. This is another big, long one. Yeah, it, it, and, and again, I see this whole thing of uh, imagine what if uh, you know. Let's come up with these hypothetical situations. Well, uh, you know, you, you just have some issues with that. Uh, Uh. Okay, I'm just kind of skimming down through here. A lot of this stuff I've already answered. Um. Sir N. Daniel writes, another hour of this nonsense? Question mark. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, a lot of what I was reading was scripture. So to call the other hour there uh, nonsense, uh, well, a lot of what you're calling there is, you know, scripture calling it nonsense. Um, TF, I can see Brian Denlinger likes controversial subjects. No, I don't like controversy. I don't seek it. I just simply answer people's questions. And I've been asked this question of what about interracial marriage? I've been asked it for a long time. I'm answering questions. 
Okay, I don't purposefully go out and try to stir up things. I'm not running a tabloid here, okay? I get asked questions, you know. I, and again, let me just make a comment on that. People say, why don't you do teachings on um, Mormonism or Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever else? Because others have. Again, I'm not, the, I'm not the depository for all biblical truth online or something. Other people have done good work. Other preachers have done good work on different subjects. That's why I don't cover it. Because I'm not the end all answer to everybody's questions. You know, I'll answer those that, you know, I can't point somebody to an article or whatever else. I'll, I'll answer that. But anyways, TF says, I can see Brian Ellinger likes controversial subjects. Okay, I have another one for you. Age of consent according to the Bible. The laws in most countries say you can only marry at age 18. But what does the Bible say about that? If a female has reached puberty and has fully developed at age 15 or even younger, is she eligible, eligible to be taken in marriage according to the Bible? What does the Bible say about the age of consent? Would be interesting to see you do an honest, unbiased video on this topic. Well, uh, I don't know what the Bible even really says on that topic, to be very honest with you. I, I have no idea. I would have to do a study on that. And I, you know, I did see some good replies. Uh, Brother Lonnie Martin, you know, uh, wrote the whole thing there of uh, physical and mental development really coming into play there when you're about 18 years old. That's why it's a good law and I would agree with that but does the Bible actually spell out how young a woman you know or how old a woman has to be before she gets married well I don't think it spells it out but I'm not sure I'd have to do a study I'll be honest I don't know I don't know that's a good question um the sensuous nutmeg writes my first question is to those Christians who agree with Brian's study on not race mixing are you going to move out of your current residences and go to live in the country of your heritage Brian, will you and your family be leaving the USA and moving to Germany? If the Lord provides, yes. Second question to those who agree with Brian's study. What cultural tradition associated with your ethnicity as a Christian are you eager to participate in that you feel you have been deprived of by living amongst people considered not of your kindred? Okay. Um, you know, again, you know, what does the Bible say? See, all these what ifs. What, 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 let me come up with an argument here. What you're doing when you do that, when you see clear scriptures presented right in your face, I mean, look at Ezra, look at Nehemiah. What do you do with those things? You know, they're, they're having a, a, a national time of divorcing their strange wives. It's called a great sin in God's eyes. What do you do with that stuff? You know, when the Bible plainly says in the New Testament that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. What do you do with the passages in the Old Testament that God never undoes those passages in the New Testament? God never says, hey, don't worry about what Ezra wrote. Don't worry about what Nehemiah wrote. Don't worry about that thing, what I did back there in Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Don't worry about that. There's nothing in the New Testament undoing that. You see in the New Testament where it's like, hey, you know, we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. The book of Hebrews is all about that. Don't bother sacrificing animals. You know, Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. The law is now our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. All right? You see, the Lord undoes certain things. He says back in the Old Testament to the Jews, he says, hey, there are certain animals that are unclean. Don't eat those animals. Well, guess what he does in the New Testament? He first shows it to Peter, and then later Paul writes about it, that, you know, every, you know, creature of God is good to thee for food and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Writes it to Timothy. So, where in the, in the New Testament are the Old Testament things undone? They're not there. Sharon Meek. Very interesting topic, Brother Brian. Just makes me love God's Word more and more. We need to let Scripture correct us. Thank you for this teaching. God bless. Amen. Lonnie Martin. Thanks for all the time you spent on this study, Brian. Grace be with you in Christ Jesus, our Lord God. Praise the Lord, brother. Um, Alfredo, Alfredo Ramos. Um, Husky 394 XP, interesting, but wasn't all that you mentioned from the Old Testament given to the children of Israel? Does that apply to the church? If so, can you please show me chapter and verse in the New Testament that we, the church, can apply? Uh, well, I did that in the study. Okay, and again, you know, uh, I'll give you another example. Where in the New Testament does it say that now it's okay to get tattoos? Back in the book of Leviticus, it says about you're not to print any marks upon you you know, or make cuttings in your flesh for the dead. And that's the scripture that most Christians will go to to say tattoos are wrong. And tattoos are wrong. I mean, your body is given to you by God. You have no business going and permanently scarring it with tattoos. 
Okay, tattoos is, is, a, is a pagan type of a thing. I mean, it's basically showing God, this is my body, I'm going to do what I want with it. Okay, but where in the New Testament does it say, thou shalt not have tattoos? It doesn't. See, but it's in the Old Testament. And the Lord never undid that going in the, into the New Testament. Back in the Old Testament, God is saying, you know, don't mix up with those people of strange lands. Don't get mixed up with them. Don't be intermarrying. Don't give your daughters to them. Don't all come together and become one. Where in the New Testament does it undo that? See? Robert Bow Rosen. Uh, hi, this is off topic, but do you have a vid that refutes James White's book, The King James Controversy, or can you direct to a vid or blog? Thank you for your time. Oh, boy. Um, there have been quite a few Bible-believing Christians that have uh, gone over James White's book. Again, it's, it's been on my list to do for years now. I'd like to do it eventually, but it's just like there's so much more that comes up. Uh, I don't even take James White seriously. Anybody that uses the new versions from the Vatican and, and radically defends the Vatican's Greek text, I don't even waste time on them. And it's just, again, it's somebody else has done the work. I just kind of point people to that and say, hey, that guy did it. He's probably even more qualified than me. Dr. Peter S. Ruckman debunked James White's book, showed over 70 places where he just out and out lied. James White out and out lied. And uh, again, you know, you'll see a thing on that. James White will say that uh, Ruckman is afraid to debate him and all this stuff. Ruckman's not afraid to debate James White. James White would not agree to the terms of the debate. And he said, Ruckman has openly said, you know, James White is free to come to... Uh, their church down there in Pensacola at any time. And James White just keeps playing these little mind games like a good Jesuit would. So uh, there, to answer your question, Robert, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, I mean, you could probably just do a search on it. Um, I know Gail Ripplinger has some stuff on, on answering James White's book. Uh, is there a video on it? I don't know. I'm not sure if there is or not. To be very honest, there's a, there's a bunch of books that, are, that have been written. Uh, different people critiqued it. AV1611.org, Dr. Terry Watkins. I think he has a couple uh, refutations of James White's book, too, available. So, um, the critic says, There's someone commenting on Brian's videos called Mama Rowe, who is sowing discord among the brethren. She's been removed. Thank you for letting me know. Discerning the truth says, I once read a study that was considered or excuse me, conducted assigning each heritage to eat only the foods that were naturally grown and prepared in their native countries. The results were amazing. They found that when people ate foods true to their native heritage, the people lost weight, gained energy, and just generally thrived. So God not only gave us separation boundaries by race, he also gave people the proper foods to consume for their, their particular health benefits. There's definitely something to be said for purity. And you are right about the blending everything to, uh, to make us all alike. New World Order stuff. Exactly. Where we are a sadly mixed up mess, living in a mixed up mess of a world, making the best of it till our King Jesus comes to set things right again. Great study, Brian. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Appreciate that comment. Uh, truth seeker. Jews a race. Jews are a culture. Uh, well, you don't read Romans chapter 11, do you? You know, I have it right here, Romans chapter 11. I say, then hath God cast away his people, God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So, uh, no, uh, they're not just a culture, they are a race. Sorry. Warbler Rab 295. Well, I guess I'm not allowed to get married now. I'm a combination of English, German, and French, and probably others. Well, that's all within the European boundary. Thing is, I bet if we went over Brian's family tree with a fine-tooth comb, we'd find someone, either male or female, who wasn't German. By the way, if we were to accept the interpretation that the family line in Luke chapter 3 is Mary's line, then due to Ruth and Boaz, Jesus himself is not of pure blood. Okay, and again, I talked about this in the study. This has all been covered before. And, you know, this whole thing of, like, Stephen Andersnake did when he was, like, doing the whole goes in for DNA testing. DNA testing uh, is false science. Okay, I mean, they, they're going to test you to see if you're pure of one kindred or, or another, but then they say, there's no such thing as a pure kindred, you, you know, in this stupid little propaganda film. Okay, then how do you test for it if you don't have any basis for what it is or what it looks like? Stupid. Absolutely stupid. And um, 
do I know everybody that's ever been married into my ancestry? Uh, no, you know, but I can tell you that there was never any non-European type kindreds. So according to the 12 boundaries, you know, I'm still okay. Um, and again, you know, when you look at my kindred, it's, it's almost completely German. So, you know, I identify with that. You say, well, are you pure or not? Or, you know, you have to be pure or something like this. I'm not saying that you have to be, you know, just exactly 100% pure to qualify for anything. Again, we are dealing with the end of the church age here. Things are very, very messed up. And again, since when am I the, the standard? You see? I mean, I told you, I was interracial dating. You know, before I was saved, I was, I was a lost man, interracial dating. I was in sin. So, you know, I'm not the standard. You want to try to find hypocrisy or something with me? Well, you can search through my life and find it. I'm not the standard. The Bible's the standard. Good night, people. I mean, if we can prove that, that Brother Brian had sin, then that throws off everything. No, because I'm not the Bible. Uh, A.G. Silver Bear writes, at 43, 34, you give men an out so they can dump their wives and children if they are in an interracial marriage. No, I don't. Uh, you claim to be a minister of the Lord, so any broken families that result from your perverse teaching is on your head. The end of the road that you are taking is Nazi-style ethnic cleansing of people who aren't considered to be of pure bloodlines. I did not say that, you stinking liar. I'm afraid for you, Brian. In obedience to Titus 3.10, I am out of here. Okay? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to open the link to their channel in a new tab. Because I don't want them to be a hypocrite, you know. I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to do block user. Are you sure you want to block the user? Sure. They said they're out of here. I'm going to hold them to their words. So there you go, AG Silver Bear. You're out of here. Congratulations. Lori Guess here. Hi, Brian. I can see that there would be childbearing issues between interracial couples. There is. Uh, because of vastly different bone structures, which would cause crooked teeth and possibly childbirthing problems, I think you did a lot of study, and this should have been taught through the centuries. But Brian, how do we stop sinning? How do Christians submit to the Lord and obey Him? How do we walk in love? How do we get victory over addiction? I've been saved a long time and still, still struggle with these things. I mean, this is why I want the rapture to happen so bad. You do such good in-depth studies. Can you tell us how to get victory over sin? Thank you. Uh, well, sister, it is a process, okay? Uh, I'm 40 years old right now, and uh, there are things, there are sins in my life that I struggled with for many, many years, and I'm not sinless, okay? I do not claim sinless perfectionism when you get saved. Um, that's part of the whole reason for being rewarded one day at the judgment seat of Christ and rewarded with millennial reign. The Bible says if we suffer, we shall also reign with Him, um, suffering in this life, the things that, that you're mentioning there, uh, going through hard times and people coming down on you and, and just like vexation from this world and just like, oh, I just want to go to be with the Lord. Those things are going to translate into the Lord rewarding you. I mean, just the very fact that you're vexed by the world and that you struggle with the thing of sin lines you up with Romans chapter 7 and what Paul said about his own struggles with sin. Uh, when you have people that don't even care about sin anymore and they have no conscience about it, uh, that's a problem. The fact that you have a conscience is a good thing. Uh, it's it's a it's a struggle to go through this life, and you know, I mean, it's it's just one of them things that we all have we all have sins that we have to fight. You know, it's it's there, and I don't teach that anybody can ever get to a point where they don't sin anymore. I would never ever teach that. Uh... I'll read this one here by Sister Brianna, uh, 2449 through 2527. I now understand why in part one you were talking about your ministry ending, but what I think is this. The Lord sends tests and problems that only grow us. Uh, there's a lot in my own life that I n never speak about that only God knows, which has strengthened myself. This is your trial, I think. The ones that were not, never true to begin with, falling away and people to attack you on your comments, I could tell you that to you. It would be a relief if the ministry did end. I think this will pass, though. Tough times always do. You have some listeners who believe exactly what you preach and are not ashamed of the word either. I am indeed one of them. 
I love the Lord. I love the Word and the Lord more than anything in this God-forsaken earth. Nothing will distort that. I got saved and it healed all the broken parts and holes inside of me. I love you, brother, and will always be supporting your ministry. Given my life isn't in the comments uh, sections, but I like the videos when I uh, can. I pray for you, your ministry, and your family. The, this matter in specifics has been a prayer made by me to you and yours. If at the end your ministry takes its leave, I could honestly say that you were one of the few that preached sound doctrine, that you were true and saved. It's very, very uh, encouraging, sister. I thank you for that. Um, you know, it's, uh, and then Jim Beckwith and Claudia, um, both Claudia 62, they're both commented and uh, agreed. And I, you know, I thank you for that. It's, it's, uh, you know, a lot of times just encouragement like that, um, exhortation, the Bible calls it, uh, that's a ministry. Um, just, just being there to encourage and exhort. And that's what I try to do to, to you out there as well, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I know that you go through struggles. You have family issues and people kicking you around and stuff like that. And it, it gets rough sometimes. It really does. I, I understand. And we've been through plenty of it ourselves. But uh, we need to hold each other up in prayer. And I, we have quite a prayer list that we pray at night <laughs> for a lot of people. So, But thank you. I do appreciate that. Uh, Claudia, 62. Ryan, thank you for standing by the truth. In my younger years, when I was a flight attendant, my mother told me that I should not dare to bring another kindred partner in her house. She was so right. My husband and I share the love of our German heritage. That is actually what keeps us together. My husband does not believe in any Bible, and I pray for his salvation. So, yeah. Yeah, again, you know, you're going to have similarities. Again, it's so weird because my wife and I were raised, I was in, raised in Pennsylvania, she's raised in Iowa, and yet so much of our childhood, so much of the way we were brought up in our family traditions and, and things like that, it, it's so similar. So when we get married, it's like, yeah, I used to do the same thing, and yeah, we used to this, and yeah, we used to that, you know, just incredible. Um, the critic says, Brother Brian, check out this video, link there, prove that multicultural, multiculturalism is a disease. I uh, haven't had time to check that out, but um, Grooms777, I talked to Phelps again last night, Eric John Phelps, in other words, uh, he said Moonan, Adams, or any of them are more, than wel are more than welcome to come on his show for the rapture, dispensation, or separation unto nationhood. He done told Richling to come on, but guess what he wouldn't answer, neither will they, God bless you and yours, Nam 1-7, amen, and so be it. Amen. Yeah, you know, they can, uh, people like uh, Brian Moonan uh, can confront somebody like uh, Eric John Phelps, but, uh, you know, in a video, but doesn't have the brains to dare to talk to him. But uh, Gizmo Goose, son, you put your finger in the hornet's nest, methinks. You do know that these two clips will be cut into sound bites that make you sound like a racist, don't you? Of course, you know, by evil report. I fully expect it. Uh, Kenny Guy, teaching Old Testament laws and teaching what was for Jew Israel, Jews, etc. is one thing, but not to finish it with the good news of the gospel of Christ Jesus is kind of sad. Teaching and telling people what sin is and then not telling them the good news, we aren't following through on sound doctrine because now we are putting people under law and telling people they are under sin with no blood sacrifice. Huh? Uh, I think everyone needs to return to Apostle Paul's teachings in his epistles and stay there. Literally stay there and don't leave it. The media would love this. Christians telling Christians that they live in sin because they are interracially, they're interracial married and bringing children to the world because of this is sin. I have all this copied and taped. Might just go to the media with this. I am ashamed. There is no one in America today that is not interracially married. But some people really want to cause division in the body of Christ. We know what Apostle Paul said about this. We all need to return to the Apostle Paul and his teachings in the epistles and we need to stay there. This is totally sad. Where is all your sacrifices for your sins, beings? You all want to live like Jews under the law. This went to four different churches today, and people could not believe that this is going on. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure, okay, I'm going back under the law, huh? You don't watch too many of my videos, do you? Uh, wake you up people. Let's just say you and your missus were made into one of the 12 couples of the 12 nations. Uh, which nation would this be? Uh, well, I've already discussed that in other videos. Um, Ron Cronin, great study. Learned so much. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. A.G. Silver Bear. Brian, you see people falling away? You mean falling away from you? Uh, again, trying to make me into the standard when I've never said that. Stephen Griffin, I'm learning a lot. Praise the Lord. John Chang, KJB, good sermon. Amen. Agatha Scalron, amen, brother. Thank you for the biblical truth. Christian Buchholz, uh, thank you for the edification, brother. John 17, 17. Praise the Lord. Uh, David Lofstrand, Lofstrand. Uh, how many races did Adam and Eve consist of? Uh, one, but something happened since then. Okay. Um, you know, they were the original couple. Kathy Zirinyi. I enjoyed both teachings. Me and my family have never blended. I give thanks to my generations before me. I told my kids we will stay in our own race and religion. I am not a racist or a bigot. Just lived by the word. Yeah, actually. Or, or exactly. Excuse me. Uh, a King James Shield. I speak to those who are not Brian. If you're a descendant of integration and you don't know what to do, question... Uh, what did Paul and Timothy do in Acts 16, 1 through 3? If, if you're of multiple kindreds, and if you ain't Jewish, then ask the Lord which one of those he wants you to go with. I'm Mexican, but I lean towards the Aztec side of my ethnicity as far as culture is concerned. But I uh, speak both English and Spanish, but more English. Okay. Rai Fra uh, says here, Thanks for the study. Makes a whole lot of sense in what is happening with the world today. Thank you, Brother Ryan. Um... Agatha Scalron, amen, brother. Thank you for the biblical truth. Praise the Lord. Unreal Ed 2010, hey, brother, God tremendously bless you and your household in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that I have not had time to sit and watch these videos completely on interracial marriage, but His Holy Spirit tugged on my heart to come to write to you today. I will keep this brief. While I do absolutely understand what you're saying, so far the thought occurred to me that the Jews were like this. They were purists and hated the Samaritans because of being mixed blood and not pedigree Jews. Perhaps you are correct in the boundaries part. However, this should have, shouldn't should have, have to be that interracial couples living in the same country should not happen, nor that they should meet from different countries and decide to s settle together in one country. Uh, what is important is that they both choose to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Yes, the enemy has been trying to destroy what God intended, but the enemy has no power over God, so in reality he is just fulfilling his purpose as the evil liar and murderer that he chose to be. I'm a King James Bible believer, and I love you, my brother, my sister, and your son. We are united in Christ, and Christ directs his true children perfectly. I have seen great proof of that fact, so I pray that the Lord touches your hearts this day and helps you too with your ministry. I have been thoroughly enjoying what you have to say on these or on things. And like you, I agree on most things, but some things I may not totally agree on, but so long as we are of like mind that Jesus Christ died for us and that we keep his word pure, then the Lord will bring will always bring us together and not dash us to the four winds. God bless you all this day in the name of our Father and of His Son and of His Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Best Affy. Um, Husky 394XP. Hi, Brian. I must confess to you something. One time I commented the video of Moon Inn to which you referred. I also spoke about Joseph and to someone else that I didn't don't remember. Maybe you referred to my comment. It was never intended against you, but I didn't meditate well before doing that, and I virtually sat in the seat of the scornful. I was not wise, and I behaved foolishly, especially because I exposed you to the scorn of the ungodly, instead of defend my brother. If I had said something against you, some dis disagreement, I had to talk with you. Meanwhile, the Lord convicted me of my foolish act, and on this issue, even before you published this study, even if it was not intended against you, the result was a painful wound against you and your family. Publicly, I cited publicly, I confess. I don't say I'm sorry or I can't, but uh, brother, please forgive me because I foolishly sinned against you. I pray always for you. Don't give up. God bless you and your family. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Elizabeth Ashby. Thanks. It's good to hear the truth. God bless. Praise the Lord. Christian Buchholz. Uh, thank you for the edification. Brother, John 17, 17. Muti Rowe. Uh, amen. Brian, everything you have shown is very true. Praise the Lord. Christopher Dudley, if an African and English mulatto goes to heaven, which kindred does he get placed into? Uh, I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. Uh, <laughs> so, continuing, Randall Witten, thank you, Brian, for addressing this very important and relevant issue. I have seen 
uh, this play out in my own family with tragic consequences, so glad you brought forth this truth. It is so obvious when studied in the Word and observable in our world presently. Amen. Yeah. Tzai, uh, there, amen. Praise the Lord. Odd interviews, Joshua Alvarez. Okay, well, it looks like you've convinced me interracial marriage is a sin and God wants distinctions. But I have a lingering question in my mind. What should I or someone else do about my own lineage? For example, I'm Latino, which comes from the mixture of Spaniards, Indians, and other kindreds. Exactly who should I marry? I heard your answer as pray about it, but is there any clear scripture that you know of that gives a godly example of a mixed person marrying someone else? Uh, from what I can imagine, there are three possibilities. Number one, don't marry at all, hoping the mixed race would eventually die out. Number two, marry within your mixed kindred to prevent further mixture with other pure kindreds. Number three, marry someone from your, one of your parents' kindreds, uh, example given Spanish or, in your, or Indian. Excuse me. I know that the mixed Onan was to raise up seed with whom, and that the Edomites were a separate mixed nation, but I would love to hear your thoughts on what the Bible teaches regarding the, the matter, and I would support you for your bold stand for the truth. I myself have taken other bold stands for Scripture that have kicked me out of certain circles, and I appreciate your bold stands in the face of a possible loss of ministry. May God continue your ministry and open the eyes of his sheep. God bless and grace be unto you, and thank you for the study. It was very edifying. Again, I would say, you know, somebody of the Central American going up into Mexico type of a thing, um, I would say that you are, you know, if there's uh, some of the Mexicans have some Native American, you know, blood in them, and would you say your things were here, a uh, mixture of Spaniards, Indians, and other kindreds. Yeah, there were some Spanish that went down into there. You know, I've been in Central America. I, I know that area and things, and, and um, but there's been some mixing there. And you can clearly see the distinctions. I mean, you can see somebody who's more, has more of the uh, Mexican Indian type of a look. You can see people um, that have more of a European look to them. Um, you know, I would simply just uh, pray about that. And, and again, you know, I believe one of the boundaries that I mentioned earlier here would have been Central America. So uh, if you take Central America, Mexico down through to the top of South America, that whole Central America area there, if there's some blending within that, now not totally blending with a white Spaniard or a Hamitic, uh, some of the people that are down in there and things, but within these um, native peoples that were inhabiting those areas, I wouldn't call you a mixed kindred. I would say that you're actually in bounds. Okay. Uh... Austin Kincaid, just a question. I'm 22 years old and I'm just getting to know my heritage since meeting my biological father. I'm 25% Ukrainian, 25% Polish, 25% German, 25% English, Irish, Scottish. Where would you consider the bounds of habitation in this case? Well, you know, again, I mean, most of those right there are, would be, you know, sort of the, you know, Japheth type of a kindred. Um, you know, the main issue with this whole study is, you know, when you're dealing with very, very far separated kindreds, where you're dealing with total opposite ends of the spectrum, where you can see a very clear difference. I would, I would probably say a lot of those, you know, Ukrainian, Polish, German, and English, Irish, Scottish, they're very similar in many ways. And again, you know, in a situation like that, I would go with your father's line is what I would recommend, you know. Okay, uh, a couple more to do here, I'm trying to keep this thing going. Uh, I'm going to read the uh, sister here by his grace. Um, she says, Brother, where do I start? Wow, praise God. My mouth and heart is humbled before the Lord. I hear people say, where the Bible is silent, we are silent. And when the Bible speaks, we speak. What Bible are you reading? I am convinced that God of the King James... Uh, Bible, Bible speaks about everything that pertains to us in our lives. It is us who fail to study and obey. I will no longer believe that lie. This encouraged me even more now to study and see what the King James Bible actually teaches. I have been lied to. The ones who spoke about pure kindred or stay with your kind, I thought was racist or old-fashioned because I was speaking what I was taught, public schools, media, music, friends, etc. Yeah, as a lost and ignorant person. Now I know I was brainwashed. This world is so disgust, disgustedly wicked, and I now now I see it even more plainly. Brother, it's some things you brought up that hit home for me. 
One thing you said about the children being affected the most by mixed kindred marriages, and you are absolutely correct, because I have known of a person who was very confused growing up and it caused problems for that person not being accepted by either family. Another problem with crossing boundaries, we lose our true identity and we may find ourselves trying to be like others to fit in, especially here in Wicked America, the land of bondage and confusion. It took God by his word to open my eyes to appreciate my own hair texture he gave me. For so long I was wearing other kindred texture of hair and thinking I was beautiful, and now I look back, I was a fool. God gave me beautiful hair, and it was a sin for me to not appreciate it. Again, by the mind control of media, that black hair texture is not acceptable in its natural state. Now I am so happy I embrace it, and God has set me free from that sin. I praise God for the truth of his word. I will continue to make every effort to appreciate my kindred and how God made me. I thank the Lord that I am married to my same kindred, and now I know how blessed I truly am. Praise God. I know this topic is heavy. For some brethren to grasp and accept, and I am truly praying for the brethren. Thank you, my dear brother, for laboring in the word of God. All glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and sister and baby Oliver. Well, thank you. Appreciate that, sister. And, you know, that's exactly it. You know, we get uh, brainwashed. You know, a lot of white women, are, they feel ashamed because they don't have blonde hair or something. That's a news media creation. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll see these, you know, women of Hamitic descent, you know, African-American women, and they'll have blonde hair. And I'm thinking, why? You know, they dye their hair blonde or something. You know, another good example would be Michael Jackson. He was a black man. Why did he make his skin white? Why did he, you know, try to look like a white man? He's ashamed of who he is. He's ashamed of who God made him. All these weird facial plastic surgeries and stuff. Turned himself into a freak. But I guess the integrationists would be all for that. All right, Brother John, the Holy Bible word of God is so very true. Integration is Satan's plan to upset the human gene pool against God. I wonder if the local Catholic bishop would get the message if I sent a package of Play-Doh with assorted collars. Collars would get the message of true diversity. <laughs> probably not. He'd probably just blend it all into one and use it for integration. Joshua Baker, this sermon was awesome. I have been called a racist at my job for some of my beliefs on this issue. Okay. Uh, Brother John F., We'll keep going here. This is another long one. I saw this before. Um, I'll just read a little bit of this. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. You know, again, it's twisting a lot of what I said. Uh, wow, my wife made me watch this. Well, you ought to get control over your marriage then. Um, I had no idea it had gotten this bad. The elders of Revelation are pure interracial couples. Seriously? I said it's a theory. Moses struck the rock the second time because he had an agging white Ethiopian wife. Is this a joke? It's a theory. Okay? I mean, you know, get permission from your wife to understand what theory means. Okay? Um, but doing violence to the scriptures to support some inane view of misogyny, that's taking it too far. Let's begin with the rape of Dinah, Jacob's daughter. Please note that she was still being held by them and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. So Dinah was raped and kidnapped. How is this? How is race the issue here? But continuing with Simeon and Levi did what was utterly uncalled for, as noted by Jacob. He had troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land. Now, if you think that that's just Jacob being a worry wart, it'd be wrong. Jacob later recalls, and he goes into the thing here and stuff of, you know, what happened there. But uh, let me look up where that scripture's at. I forget where the exact reference is. I don't have my notes here with me right now. Um, I'll just look up Dinah. Okay. Genesis chapter 34. Okay, he says uh, right here, Brother John, with his wife's permission, um, wrote this here. He says, uh, how, is the, how is race the issue here? Okay, Genesis chapter 34. Verse 8, And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give him her to wife. And make ye marriages with us, and give uh, your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get you possessions therein. Um, verse 16, Then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. These two sons were deceiving him. 
How is race an issue? Can you read plain English there, Brother John? Brother John F. I mean, get your wife's permission, then maybe you can. Okay? And, uh, you know, and it goes down through... What about Ruth? I talked about that in the study. You need to watch it. Um, what about Moses? He took a wife of Midian named Zipporah. You know, again, I talked about this stuff. Uh, uh, doing violence to God's word to support some doctrine, if it, it knows nothing of is not wise, there are many sins which come from the heart and man and defile him. Marrying a person of another race is not one of them. Brian, you need to repent. I ain't going to repent of nothing. Okay, you didn't prove anything. What do you do with Ezra and Nehemiah? Didn't even talk about those. Of course not. Uh, two more here and then we're done. Eve Chris, Ecclesiastes 1.9, King James Version. Uh, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Thank you, Brian. I look forward to your videos because you cherish and glorify the Word of God. Keep to the straight path, and we will be right there with you in spirit until we are gathered together in Christ. Thank you, sister. I appreciate that. Dave G., uh, 1611 AV Bible Believer. Thank you, Brian, for this forthright message. You brought many scriptures to light that point out the fact, facts that God is against the mixing of kindreds. My wife and I, too, believe people should stay within their kindred. We are each uniquely different. Praise God. We are daily keeping you and your family in prayer. Thank you very much, brother. I really do appreciate the prayers. Well, that's the greatest gift that anybody can give us. Um, and again, the whole purpose of this study is not to say Nazi ethnic cleansing, let's kill anybody that's, that's not of pure... No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said stop the madness of, of kindred mixing. All right? I mean, the Bible is very much against it. I mean, I proved that in this study over and over and over again, many, many scriptures proving that. So, uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing this uh, for many videos. You know, I just, I wanted to do this one here quickly. I know it kind of got a little bit long, but uh, that's going to be it. Just wanted to bring that thing out and uh, just don't fall for this stuff. Okay? So, uh, that will be it. Thank you for watching.